Well, we haven't just found one squirrel, Jamie. We found the metropolis of squirrels. It might look like just one single dead leadwood, but there are squirrels everywhere on this tree. There's now six of them in total. Sorry, five of them that I've counted. So we've got the one on the lowest branch, which is busy sunning himself and running around. Then we've got the two that are huddled up together over there. And then right on top, we've got the two little ones that are also huddled in the sunshine. So there's a whole bunch of them here and they're all just absorbing a nice little bit of sun and they really are very, very cute. Those are the two little baby ones. Don't they have the sweetest little faces? Hello guys, are you cold? You can see they're all sort of puffed up and enjoying this morning light that is now coming down. Really, really cool. Now it's very uncommon to see all this number of squirrels in one tree and also very, very peaceful with one another. So quite strange that they're all kind of taking it easy. It must be a family unit of some sort and I'm sure these two, oh look at that guy, he's completely hanging out. Got back legs stretched out, front legs stretched out, almost looks like he's at the beach. And it's amazing that they actually can grip onto a tree. I mean it's hanging pretty much straight down and it's still able to put its front feet out like that and still hold on tight. It really is quite incredible. Squirrels absolutely amaze me with their movements around a tree. They go up and down so quickly, it really is incredible to watch. Isn't that cool? Hello guys. Are you just taking it easy for the morning? Let's see now what happens. Oh, big stretch, little yawn. This is amazing. Generally when we find squirrels with a vehicle, they tend to run into their little holes and they don't actually allow us to get too much of an insight into them. So these guys are being very, very nice to us. And we to watch them go about their sort of morning business is very, very cool. Now, I wonder what this squirrel is doing. I wonder if it's not just keeping its incisors in check, given that they are part of the rodent family. Often those incisors grow very, very fast, and sometimes you'll find that the... Oh, there we go. A little bit of greeting. I think that one... Oh, there comes the other one. This is so cool. So, Gail, you're saying that it seems like much of the world has squirrel populations. It is, indeed. They go anywhere in the world and there seems to be some sort of a squirrel in that area. And it's probably because they are very, very successful in that they find great places to hide. They feed on pretty much all kinds of trees and seeds and nuts and those kind of things, which most parts of the world do have. Most parts of the world have trees and so there is a food source for squirrels. And then the fact that they probably breed so fast means that they can produce enough numbers to, su to survive in cities and areas where people have taken over that some of the other large animals can't do. It's also squirrels are sort of seen as quite friendly, cute little animals, so they're not exterminated like rats are. And so you end up with a lot more of them. Also, they're quite entertaining to watch. Where are you going? Are you going into your hole? No, nope. looking around. Oh, there we go. Now we've got to do a bit of grooming, got to make sure we're all in good condition. little itch on the ear. Absolutely amazing. So, David, unfortunately we don't get red squirrels here. The only squirrel that we see in this particular part of South Africa is these, the tree squirrel. When we go down towards the Kalahari Desert, then you'll get the ground squirrels down there, which are much, much bigger than what these guys are. Um, and the red squirrels, unfortunately, not in Africa as far as I know. They mostly are in the United States and Europe, and with the gray squirrels as well. And there's these really cool squirrels that I've seen in the United States, with the, which are black, which really look quite quite cool as well. So, unfortunately, this is the only type of squirrel that we get, these little tree squirrels that we see bouncing around. And you can see they're aptly named by the fact that they spend most of their time in trees. Very seldom will you see squirrels on the ground unless they're crossing from one tree to another. It's much safer for them in the trees. You can imagine now if some sort of predator came, these squirrels could then dart into one of those holes. Whereas if they're on the ground, it's much easier for them to be eaten. And there's a lot more predators on the ground. So there's snakes, there's leopards, there's lions, there's birds of prey. So MJ McNulty you're wondering if the big cats ever eat these squirrels and what are their predators? Well big cats will eat them. So I've seen leopards go after squirrels many many times, it's particularly leopards that are the age of Shongila and Hosanna. So those younger leopards will often hunt squirrels 
um, and they learn to sort of hunt by chasing squirrels up and down trees and so that's a big predator for them but in other predators would be birds of prey so things like um, those martial eagles or crown eagles um, you'll find they go after them then you'll find snakes so black mambas um, cobras pythons they'll go after squirrels as well and then your smaller cats so wildcat um, caracal serval if they can get to a squirrel will also go after them so they've got quite a number of predators out here and that's why they live this arboreal life and isn't that a cute look at it look at how that one is being absolutely groomed is being turned over and getting a thorough grooming isn't this amazing oh, this is really really cool So, Pritam, normally what happens with squirrels in terms of finding places to sort of shelter and nest um, is, a, is a natural hole in a tree. They won't make the hole itself. They might sort of prep it and add a little bit of grass in there or kind of make it a little bit more insulated. But otherwise, it's a natural formation in the tree itself. And that's why they like dead trees like this because the sort of the bark has fallen off and these cracks and crevices are revealed and these squirrels can then go inside there and spend time. So... It's a perfect place. Oh, look at that. That squirrel is loving it. It's on its back, getting a little grooming on its tummy. Is that nice, little squirrel? <laughs> it almost looks like it's dead. It's passed out. It's got its legs wide open. Even the front legs look as though they flopped to the side. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like I say, it's so seldom that we actually get to see squirrels spending lots of time out and about. So to see them all kind of huddled onto one branch and grooming one another and interacting really is very, very special. There we go, all five together. So, William, you're wondering if we would hear the squirrels if they started to alarm call. Well, yes, we would. They would make a sort of a very funny sound and I'm hoping that they would do it because when we first got here one was making that sound and we often use squirrels to help us find some of the cats so when they start alarm calling you can hear it and you know that sometimes there could be a disturbance and particularly with leopard squirrels will alarm call quite heavily for leopard so when you hear them alarm calling especially if you're following leopard tracks it's always good to go and investigate where the squirrels are so I'm hoping that they will make a sound at some point and we'll be able to hear it but it's a very sort of odd sound. It's not a sound that I can make. I've tried many times, but unfortunately I have never been able to do it. Now, we're going to probably sit a little bit longer with our squirrel family because I'm really thoroughly enjoying watching their antics. And while we do this, let's go back to Taylor. Maybe she can do a squirrel noise for us. <laughs> 